My name is Chris Hintz. I am a Senior Director of Product and Solutions here at Fortinet, focused primarily on our wireless offering, which you might have guessed because we're here for Mobility Field Day. So what I usually like to do to kick these things off is to give a little bit of an overview of Fortinet in general, because some people may know very well everything that we have in the networking space and with wireless, but others may not really know us as anything other than a security vendor. And some people maybe who only just kind of follow Mobility Field Day on Twitter, just know us as the company who names everything 40 fill in the blank. So let's let's talk a little bit about you know who Fortinet is and, and kind of where we come from. We are, of course, as I hinted at, a security-based company that really is our bread and butter. But because we really care about network security as much as we do, that does mean we get involved in the network quite a bit. We also believe in training people. This is something that we really kicked off into high gear during the beginning of the pandemic, where we really felt it was important with people at home with free time to really get trained, get a better understanding of challenges in the world of cybersecurity as well as networking. And we've continued that through us as the years have gone by because we've seen a lot of really great uptick on this and people really appreciate being brought up to speed on these technologies. But to better understand kind of why Fortinet is in this space, and again, why we're here at Mobility Field Day, I want to talk a little bit about some of the trends that Fortinet sees, and therefore why that kind of drives our approach to this product. One is digital acceleration. I know some of these are marketing buzzwords. Yeah, I'm guilty. I'm, I'm the marketing guy. I promise there are technical people coming later in the presentation. Don't worry. You know, you're not going to have to listen to me the whole time. I, I learned my Learned my lesson, the first one of these I did for Fortinet, where it was me the whole time. And man, you could you could just see Keith by about 40 minutes in. Just, you know. <laughs> it was four to hours long. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but with digital acceleration, we've started to see companies really driving their technology refreshes uh, as time has gone on. And COVID kind of, in one sense, gave them a chance to do this, but it also showed people that there was a real need to improve. Uh, of course, work from every, everywhere is becoming a very thing. You know, we all got sent home for a while. Now there's really this expectation that I should be able to work anywhere I go. Applications have also shifted around, and we'll start talking a little bit uh, later in some of the discussions on the technical side, how that affects some of the products that we're bringing to bear. And, of course, we see a, a ever-evolving threat landscape. So there's more and more going on in the threat space and the reality is it's the network itself that's under attack. And that includes the wireless network. But really, we don't see this as a sort of thing where it's just the RF that we want to be concerned about from a security perspective. The idea is that the entire network is the goal and the data on the network. Wireless is just the entry point. So we are looking at securing it all the way up. Now, there's challenges with each of these things that we know people face. And we're looking to really solve as many of these as we possibly can. But again, because it's a mobility field day, I'm going to be focused particularly on that network edge explosion, this idea that more and more edges of my network, including Wi-Fi, are now subject of exposure. Uh, as Tom talked about, you know, obviously, we appear at a number of field days, and you'll see us talk about solutions that we may have to other of these pillars in other sessions. So specific to wireless and looking at kind of our vision and the technologies that we bring to bear, you know, this threat landscape that we see is driving from our perspective and our vision a need to really converge networking and security. Bring these things intimately together because historically from our perspective, this has been a bolt-on. I architected the network and then I tried to just bolt on security somehow, or I, Maybe from, a, from the security stack's point of view, I came up with my security plan and I tossed it over the fence and told the networking guys, figure it out, but this is what you got to work, work within. We think these things nearly need to be brought together so they work together in harmony. There's also consolidation that we're starting to see. When we talk to customers and, and just the hassles that we see a lot of people facing is, look, all these different products that I now need, if I want to solve all the pieces of my problems, become a hassle to manage if I really deal with that. So let's dive into each of those a little bit more. The idea is all these networking technologies, VPN, WLAN switch, routing, proxy, all of that, 
Most everything you think about security can be brought together in what we have started to call security-driven networking. I know I can see from the eyes of some of the delegates in the room who have been to previous field days like, oh, he's still on security-driven networking. Yes, yes we are. Because we really think this is important. We believe that you aren't going to have good network security unless security is actually driving what the network does. From a consolidation point of view, this is kind of interesting because this is something that I think has accelerated in the last couple of years as people have bought point products and bought point products and bought point products to solve all their individual issues and then suddenly found themselves going, I can't deal with this. And what you're starting to see in the industry, and we also see it from analysts, we hear it from customers is, I need some sort of platform approach. I need something that actually brings all this, consolidates it into a couple of key platforms where everything talks to each other. So information is shared. And that's gonna improve everything because that way, what one thing sees, the other tool knows about. That's across security, that's across the network, it's across all technologies. Because you can't leave one of those things out. Otherwise you're missing part of the picture. So for Fortinet, that all comes down to our security fabric. You're gonna see this every time you talk to a Fortinet person because it's really the heart of what we're trying to do. You can see it, we use FortiGuard threat intelligence kind of at, at the center of this hub. And I know it's got the moving dots and everything it can be very hypnotizing if you stare at it too long. We're gonna focus in on the secure networking portion primarily. But more than anything, it brings in cloud security, zero trust. We have an open ecosystem because we know that not everybody is going to run every single product under the sun as being from Fortinet. So we do everything we can to pull as much in and make it part of that overall consolidated view. It's a very broad portfolio set. We could joke about a lot with that, but you know what? It's fair. We believe it. And we actually think it's really important. It all integrates together. I just talked to you about that whole idea of that mesh architecture. That's why it's got to be integrated to work together. And then we leverage automation between the different parts. What one thing sees, the other can react to. And that includes the networking layer. And we're going to hear from both uh, Sumanth and Alex later today and see some of the ways that that happens. Now, again, I know this is a bit of an eye chart. I'm not going to walk through every single icon, but to kind of give you a feel as you break out the different pieces of where we have solutions, you can see that through everything from networks, users and devices, applications, we have offerings to try and hit and tick off all those boxes. But again, all of this is part of that fabric. So you don't have the same problem of, does it work together? Does it understand what the other one's doing that you may have going with a piecemeal approach? Well, now I'm going to actually move deep and go straight to the networking portion. Let's talk, it is Mobility Field Day. What is this kind of Fortinet advantage? What do I mean when I'm talking about this? And what does it mean for the wireless network? Well, when we look at network requirements, firewalls, SD-WAN these days is becoming bigger and bigger, you know, 5G LTE, of course, the wireless switching, NAT. For Fortinet, all of this converges together on First, first 40 name to come, what we call our 40 OS. That's, you may hear some people shorthanded as, as false. That's the operating system that runs on our next generation firewall. That's the heart of everything we do. That next generation firewall, just to, so you can kind of get your decoder rings out, called a 40 gate. So you may hear myself and some of the other presenters mention a 40 gate, that's the next generation firewall. But, 40 OS is really key because we believe in getting 40 OS everywhere. It runs on the, the FortiGate appliance, but it can also be installed as a VM. We use it for some of our virtualized solutions because we really see a solution where we can bring 40 OS anywhere you need it. We even offer some work from home solutions where we have a containerized version of 40 OS running on an appliance. So that gives me flexibility then because all of this, including the wireless, is tied in to 40 OS, which means when I get one of the Fortinet next generation firewalls, it has a wireless controller built in by virtue of the operating system. I can plug a Fortinet AP into it. 
it'll adopt it, run it, configure it, et cetera. Your usual wireless controller type of functionality you're used to seeing, you think is there, it's actually built into a firewall. And on top of that, I don't have a bunch of extra licenses for that nonsense. You bought a firewall, it's included. We have a full solution portfolio, so this isn't something where, yeah, we have a couple APs and we're done. I'm not going to walk through each and everything again because my time's limited. I want to get to the technical portion. But, you know, we've heard some feedback in previous sessions of people saying, well, you know, it wasn't until midway through that I really realized, gosh, you actually are building all this stuff. And yeah, we are. We're actually making all these pieces. From an access point perspective, we have two different families of access points. I will not abbreviate 40AP, but we have the 40AP family and the 40AP U family. The only real difference here is that the U family has a little bit more oomph to it. It can actually run UTM services on board for those people who want to be able to do that. And you can get a, a per AP license to do that if you need to. That has utility for potentially a single remote AP that you want to put at a, at a remote location. It can still be controlled by a FortiGate that's maybe back in your home office. That's fine. It can still report home for config and control. But if you want to ensure that there are actual security services happening right at that edge, you can do that. There's really no skew difference from a management perspective. So these are complete mix and match for any of our management. I'll talk a little bit about management later. And then we actually have a session on one of our management offerings that we haven't talked a lot about at Field Day coming later with Alex. We've actually done a lot of work within the last couple of years to standardize our mounting. I know in some senses, mounting sounds boring and nobody really wants to hear about it, but for those who actually install this all the time, the fact that we've done our best to get all of our modern APs onto a single bracket, and people go, why didn't you talk about that? Like, I love that, that makes my life so much easier. So we have done a lot of work with that. We have desktop uh, units, so any of our wall jack APs, we make a little universal bracket for all, the, all of them that can turn that into a little desk mount. And that's, of course, become big with work from home because now all of our wall plates always had a couple extra wired ports on the bottom. Now you almost have a little home office there where you've got the AP, can be broadcasting corporate SSID, you've got some extra wired ports that they can actually use that same tunnel to go back and be part of the overall corporate infrastructure. Obviously, we have ruggedization, we have some under seat enclosures. We've done a lot to flesh this out to make sure that everybody has what they need to deploy Fortinet wherever they need to deploy it. From an antenna perspective, we actually just overhauled this past year. So since the last mobility field day, we completely overhauled our antenna portfolio. So it's been refreshed and renewed. Every single access point, obviously the internal antennas, sure. But every access point comes with antennas in the box. Now, if you want to have something with a different pattern, et cetera, we have options. But every AP actually comes with antennas in the box, so you don't have to try and figure that out or have a long, larger bill of materials with Fortinet. In fact, with a lot of what we do in our reduction of licenses, I've actually had customers talk about the fact that, hey, you know, the, the bomb that we saw from you guys, we thought we, were, we thought we were missing a page because it was so short because we don't have a bunch of licenses for all this. We do, you know, things are in the box a lot of times. From a network operations portfolio perspective, I'm not gonna go through each and every bullet point here. We do have multiple management options. The idea being it can be on-prem, it can be cloud-based. As I said, these APs work in either way. So we're not, you know, there's no rip and replace. If you decide to, to go to the cloud or if you start in the cloud and you wanna move over to, a, to an on-prem option, not a problem. You can already see the proliferation of 40 names, I know. We have a, an AI ops platform that we'll talk a little bit about to, more today. So I think those who remember last year know that we talked and, and kind of revealed 40 AI ops at that time and talked a little bit about where we were going. And Alex is back this year to kind of go in depth about that. And then Fortum Monitors kind of becomes this good transition it sits in the network operations portfolio, but it's a good example of an application that is sort of one of those applications that people expect from a networking vendor that sometimes they may think that Fortinet doesn't have, but we do. So that is a DEM solution. Where we want to look at digital experience. We want to be able to look across your entire footprint. It doesn't matter whether or not it is Fortinet equipment or non-Fortinet. We also recognize that these days more and more, 
as IT moves applications into the cloud, some things IT doesn't even own. So that ability to then monitor that performance from the client all the way out to a cloud application and understand what's happening with that becomes really important. We have NAT functionality at various levels. Sumanth is actually gonna talk about that as soon as I get off the stage. And then we have location analytics, which most people would expect. And of course, being a security company, we do have some of these zero trust mechanisms, both built into platforms, as well as additional offerings to be able to solve any zero trust situation you may find yourselves in. Now, one last thing that I wanted to speak to before I close up shop and hand over to Sumant was we've been asked before, and I think actually, Sam, you were one of the first guys who really pushed us on this and said, hey, it, you know, look, this all sounds great. As someone who maybe isn't familiar with Fortinet and I want to understand how to install your stuff, what kind of documentation do you have? And I thought that was actually, we all took that away as, you know what, that's a really good point. We can do better on that. And so we have deployed a large number of guides in the last basically year and a half so that we could come back and say, you know what, if you're not familiar with Fortinet, you're a little, you know, you're, you, you know some other vendor, you're not sure, you want to understand this, you want to do some reading at a technical level of how to set this gear up, we've got guides. You can find them on our documentation site. 